Well, Trump's election win is impacting his outstanding legal issues. The judge in Trump's New York criminal trial is now reportedly considering throwing out the felony conviction following his victory. Manhattan Supreme Court Justice Juan Mershon has already delayed sentencing until after the election and has given himself until next Tuesday to decide if the conviction against President-elect Trump still stands. But New York's Attorney General Letitia James is not giving up, vowing to step up and fight the next Trump administration. Watch. We did not expect this result, but we are prepared to respond to this result. And my office has been preparing for several months because we've been here before. We faced this challenge before. And we use the rule of law to fight back. And we are prepared to fight back once again. Because as the attorney general of this great state, it is my job to protect and defend the rights of New Yorkers and the rule of law. And I will not shrink from that responsibility. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Kaylee, forgive me while I laugh for a second. As I live here, uh, I think shrinking from the rule of law is exactly what I've seen on the streets here every day in New York since moving here. So what exactly, per our last conversation, is she talking about and what does she mean when she says fight against this Trump, this newness? Like, I, I, don't, I don't understand with the transparency of what seems to be a personal vendetta against nothing. Yeah, Letitia James tried lawfare, the Democrat Party tried lawfare, and they lost. So now they need to go home. That strategy <laughs> did not work. Letitia James brought a case, the civil fraud case, and it was unprecedented. Our own brain room said we cannot find any example of a similar suit against a crime that was victimless. They could not find precedent for this. So she tried this, and the naked political reason was this was politically motivated. She called Trump a con man, all sorts of names. She ran on this. And what she's doing now is exactly what Gavin Newsom's doing, exactly what Kamala Harris did yesterday, and now her. They all want to be the leader of the resistance. They are all positioning themselves to take the mantle of the Democrat Party and move forward. I don't think this works. We will see. And I would just say this. Mark Levin, if you want an analysis of this, did a brilliant tweet that said states do not have this reverse federalism authority to indict a sitting president. DOJ policy, very good. So if you want con law analysis on this, go to Mark Levin. I think an additional point of confusion I have, Leslie, is that it's my understanding that attorneys general and the like serve at the pleasure of the people. And wasn't it clear by the results on Tuesday how exactly American people feel about crime on their streets and the stewardship of their tax dollars, which is responsibility for, su for such, and actually cleaning up actual streets and, and criminal behavior. It is not personal vendettas. It is not watching someone get on their soap stand and talk about fighting for something that really, it doesn't exist. We're so exhausted by it. Doesn't she get that? You can't say somebody, uh, you know, is going to be or not be charged, you know, because people voted for them. However, when it's the president of the United States, the Department of Justice is very clear about that. And that is different. It's different than the mayor of New York. It's different than a council, you know, city council member uh, from any state. Um, I have been told by a lot of my lawyer friends in California, if he wants to get rid of his legal troubles, he's got to win re-election. And he did. And that will get rid of his legal troubles, in my Our opinion. Oh, All right, maybe fine. I'm biased since in my purse I have to carry pepper spray, I carry a taser, I carry a lot of things since I live here in New York City. So I, I just don't understand, again, in, in my daily existence, how I am exposed to such rampant lawlessness and crime here on the streets. I'm hearing the attorney general for this mm -hmm. state talk to me about killing the beast, destroying the beast that has no existence actually here. It is a sham on her part. Why, why is that? Those remarks were frightening to me. For a sitting attorney general to say we, her office, was preparing for the results of this day, preparing for the person to get elected? No, when you're the attorney general, you're prepared to, help, to prevent crimes or to prosecute criminals. You don't prepare for the results of an election that you don't like. That's a frightening transgression. As for the judge in this case, what I'm waiting for is I won't believe it until I don't see it. I don't trust the judge who are waiting for the sentencing to come down in the municipal case, the county case against mm -hmm. Trump in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. I don't trust for him not to say he's convicted, he's going to be sentenced to two years in prison, we'll hold it in abeyance, and it'll begin on January 20th, 2029. I do not trust the New York criminal justice system. I don't trust the criminal justice system in New that York. Point. They are anti-Trump, out to get him, and the governor of New York made a statement last week, too, basically saying conservatives should leave New York. You're not welcome in New York. 
New York is a corrupt state when it comes to the leadership. We saw it with the attorney general, the governor. I don't trust so, the judge. So what do you do with all the voters who vote for the Republicans? Because in New York, she you only... Throw them out. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> she saw that, that differential between um, her and Biden shrink. He won New York by far more many Democrats. Now, I'm not going to say it's not a blue state anymore. Just like New Jersey, there are pockets of it, though, like South Jersey, that are very red along the shore. So, I mean, what do you do with the voters? Well, That's as contemptible as calling them deplorable and garbage. Do you want to, everybody to leave? Go back to what we talked about before. I want Republicans in New York to fight, fight, fight. <laughs> Lee Zeldin almost did it, and now we have an increasing chance here in New York of doing better. Mike Lawler might Mike run for Lawler governor. did it, and he won. So it's still a really uphill for Republicans, but at least we're talking about it again. Yeah. You know, I, I want to steal something, Emily, if I can, from Leslie, because I do, I do think this is true. Um, Democrats, the whole country, but Democrats have to lead on this point since 12 out of the last 16 years they've been in the White House. And they haven't left yet. It goes on through January. Show the rest of the country what it means to do exactly what you said, Leslie, and to turn the corner on this and get ready both in your party and for the country what it looks like next to fight or whatever the heck you want to call it moving forward. I'm sure Donald Trump likes the trademark phrase, fight, fight, fight. But... I think we already Can have. There was a it. phone call. There was a concession. There's no storming the Capitol. That's one We're man. Not We're saying That's it's one rigged. man. He's We're not doing the right the thing. He took the, the high road. <laughs> some, some in your party are not. So I'm just wondering, will they do that? Because it's really for the betterment, not just of the country, but particularly for your, for your party. Yeah. And as we talked about yesterday, part of the effectiveness, because it's true, of Donald Trump's candidacy and campaign is the fact that he said, it's me now, but it's you next. It's us next. We've seen that already. And Letitia James and her speech was just an example of that. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.